Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz. I'm Liang Wanru. Today we are going to talk about trading under increasing opportunity cost. So we know in our economy because we have different labors with different talents. And therefore, if you want to produce more of one good, then eventually the opportunity cost is going to increase. As a result, we are going to have both shaped production possibility curve. So how would that change our trade theory? Well, we will look at the example of for both uh, U.S. and Canada, and you can see that they both have a bow-shaped um, production possibility curve. So if we don't trade with each other, then we'll have to consume whatever we produce. So suppose the U.S. is going to consume and produce at point A, where we have uh, five automobiles and 18 bushels of wheat. And you can find the tangent line to the production possibility curve there and the slope of the tangent line is going to tell you the opportunity cost of an automobile in terms of weight. And in this example, our opportunity cost of one automobile is a third bushel of weight. What about Canada? Now suppose they choose to produce and consume at point A prime, that's on their production possibility curve, and you can find the tangent line. The tangent line tells you um, the opportunity cost of one automobile is three bushels of wheat. So you can see that the opportunity cost of an automobile is lower in the United States and therefore we have a comparative advantage in the production of automobile. Now suppose we start to trade with each other and we're going to partially specialize on the good that we have a comparative advantage. So the U.S. has a comparative advantage in the production of automobile. Therefore, when we specialize, we're going to produce more automobile and we're going to produce less wheat. Whereas Canada, because they have a comparative advantage in the production of wheat, therefore when they specialize, they're going to partially specialize on wheat, meaning they're going to produce more wheat and fewer automobiles. You can see that they still produce automobile and it's just that they produce less automobile than before. So we partially specialize on point B and B prime. And now we're going to trade. Suppose the terms of trade is a one-to-one. -one. In particular, we are going to trade seven automobiles for seven bushels of wheat. So what we're going to do is here we're in the United States and we partially specialize on automobile and now we're going to export seven automobiles in exchange for seven bushels of wheat from Canada. So we're moving this way, um, even though we produce 12 automobiles, we are going to export seven to Canada. So we end up with only five automobiles. But we're going to import seven bushels of wheat from Canada. So we're moving from 14 bushels of wheat to 21 bushels of wheat. And therefore, we eventually consume at point C. Notice that C is above A, and C is outside of production possibility curve. And therefore, we're doing better than before. Even though we have the same number of automobiles as Autarchy, now we have more wheat to enjoy. It. What about Canada? They are now exporting their wheat to the United States and they're importing some automobile from the United States. So they're moving down seven units, 13 minus seven is six, and now we're going to also have more automobiles. We're moving to the right, seven units. So they end up with 20 automobiles and six bushels of wheat. So you can see um, they're moving to the right. They're doing better than before as well. So we can see um, that's how we trade under increasing opportunity costs. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.